The new version of ChatGPT is here. Are you the better version of Siri? By now, you've probably seen some of OpenAI's demo videos and other great YouTube commentary on it. And the dominant observation has been how personable and kind of flirty the new AI is, while not being that much more intelligent. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. Maybe just run a hand through your hair or lean into the mad genie's vibe. <laughs> Well, 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 just when I thought things couldn't get any more interesting. In other words, the content of its responses are still largely the same. So overall, people are like, okay, she's friendly and faster, but not necessarily smarter. It's been over a year since GPT-4, and unfortunately, I still have a job. For Omni, Claude, and Gemini 1.5 all seem to be pretty maxed out on how far they can get with these benchmarks. Making models faster and cheaper is great, but if they're not becoming more intelligent, then the singularity is nowhere in sight. They've already absorbed almost all the information humans have created, so unless there's a major breakthrough that makes AI actually intelligent and able to learn independently, it sure looks like we're standing on the edge of a plateau and the only place to go is the trough of disillusionment. Well, I'm here to showcase to you today why the new AI model is better and smarter precisely because of its ability to be faster and friendlier. It has that O ending for a very important reason. Hi everybody, if you're new here, which you likely are because my AI and ML channel is relatively young, welcome. And if you've already been with my channel, glad to see you back here again. My name is Tam and I'm a machine learning engineer and I've worked on projects like the Apple Vision Pro and robotic arms, particularly with a focus on computer vision models. So that's why today we're not just going to talk and chit chat with GPT-40, but we're going to understand how it's made. I'm gonna use my background as a machine learning engineer and break it down for you. So let's get into it. So if you go to OpenAI's website, where they introduce GPT-40, you're going to see that here they do their announcement video, then here's like an introductory text, and then here are the other wonderful demo videos. And then right below that are very important details on what the difference between GPT-4 and 4.0 are. Specifically, in GPT-4 and 3.5, they talk about how three separate models were used to make voice mode possible so that it can take your audio, then convert it to text, and then get an answer from text to text, and then convert that text back to audio. And by having jumped through so many different models, there's a lot of information that gets lost along the way from the audio, including the tone, who the speakers were, background noises, and also it loses ability in its range of what it can output. So that means no laughing, no singing, and no emotion. And then for GPT-4.0, instead of three different models, it's a single model that is brand new and it can handle all three different data types, text, video, and audio, one and all the same, end to end from input to output by the same neural network. Now, in case that was a whole lot of mumble jumble where the details were either hard to understand or easy to overlook, let's break it down into this visual diagram here to make it easier to follow along. All right, first up is the before scenario. So that's gonna apply for GPT 3.5 and 4. So in voice mode, we have an audio as input and then an audio as output. To get from one end to the other, it's a long road where we first transcribe the audio to text and then we take that piece of text and then throw it into the text-to-text -text model, which is essentially the chat GPT model that we've always been chatting with. And then we take that text response and then finally, as a last step, convert it back to audio to therefore get our audio response. Now, this is a lot of steps, but here you see the three models that the OpenAI page was referring to. Note, however, that chat GPT 3.5 and 4 really only encompass this portion of the pipeline where the text is input and the text is output. ChatGPT here works in conjunction with these other audio models just to enable additional types of input and output. But really this here is the core for ChatGPT. This here are just auxiliary components. And by using these auxiliary models for the audio, yeah, we gain the ability to support audio as input and output, but there's still a significant amount of information that we lose along the way. Particularly, as we transcribe from audio to text, we lose audio information like tone, volume, inflection, and we also lose the voice of who was doing the talking. And therefore, we're not able to recognize when there's multiple speakers anymore. And we also lose background noise, and this could have been providing important contextual information. 
And on the flip side, when we go from text to audio, that speech is going to be very limited in what it can do due to its only input being purely text, purely words. There's going to be no additional data for it to know what emotion to express it with. How sad should it sound? How happy? How serious? It also won't be able to do different character voices like a robot voice or different accents and unfortunately not be able to sing either, whether sing well or sing badly. So overall, in this design of the pipeline for the AI model, there's a lot of information that's lost along the way and a lot of limitations in what it's able to do. But worry not, because now in ChatGPT 4.0, we address this problem. So once again, let's work off the example for voice mode, where we take audio as input, but now, instead of throwing it into three separate models, we only throw it into one Omni model. And that Omni model then directly gives us our audio response. No transcription is happening here, no conversion to speech. The audio becomes the direct input to the model. And then the audio response is the raw output from the model. They're directly attached to the main brain of it all. And by doing it this way, by having a singular model where you don't need to transcribe, you are able to retain all of that rich audio information like tone, inflection, and volume. You're going to know who was doing the talking and you're able to retain that background noise to know whether you're at a concert or is that background TV noise or is that the faucet running in the background. All of this rich contextual information you're able to retain now and help build that bigger picture. And now when it's responding to you, it's not only going to know what to say back to you, but also how to say it back to you. You. And so when it delivers the answer back to you, it's able to add emotion to it and sound happy, fun, flirty, personable. It can also sound animated now where it can speak in different accents or sound like a robot. And I wonder if it can sound like a dolphin. <laughs> And last but not least, it can also sing in different styles and really put those vocal cords to use. Moreover, this ability to handle raw input and raw output applies to also text and image as input and text as image as output. And just to clarify, this Omni model is a mix and match type of model where you can mix and match any type of input and give it any type of output. So you can go from text to either text audio or image, and you can go from audio to either text audio or image and so on and so forth. It doesn't need to be just from text to text and just from audio to audio. And this versatile Omni model that supports multiple modalities as input and multiple modalities as output is our GPT-40. It can do everything that the previous generation of models did and more and do it faster. So to briefly recap, GPT-40 has fewer models, which leads to less latency and also less loss of data. GPT-40 was also trained with new GPUs. Thanks to Jensen and the NVIDIA team for bringing us the most advanced GPUs to make this demo possible today. Which have faster inference times. And because GPT-40 is an omni model handling multiple types of modalities of data, it's therefore able to make more connections across the different data types, which helps deepen its contextual understanding of things. So for my closing remarks, it is exactly because of this design makeover that makes GPT-40 an omni model that is precisely why GPT-40 is a smarter model. Fundamentally, it is smarter because it is capable of handling more and making more connections. And the benefit of it being a more intelligent model is that it's able to express itself in a friendlier way, in a flirtier or more personable way, as others have liked to call it. And it is because it is smarter and makes faster connections is why it can give faster responses. So the next time that someone is lamenting with you that GPT-40 is friendlier and faster, but not necessarily more intelligent, show them this. The unification of all these models into one is a big deal. We're going from single modality to multi-modality. It means rather than understanding each of these pieces separately, it's able to make connections in between them and therefore heighten its intelligence and understanding. For example, besides just describing a cat with words like furry and fluffy, it can now understand it visually and conceptually and that it's furry and fluffy and how the fur just melts into your hands and you just can't get enough. Damn, did I just out myself as a cat lady? Okay, okay, let's try again. 
Think of it as rather than three people working on three separate things on a project and not really talking to one another much, you have one person on beast mode who is able to do all three jobs so they can understand it from both a small picture and a big picture point of view. So voice mode is already being made available and soon they're gonna roll out video mode as well, which is a lot of what their demo focused on. Once that lands into our hands, I can only imagine the massive impact that this is going to have on our worlds. In my next video, I'll be going over all the things that will go RIP thanks to GPT 4.0, including humans, dogs, and relationships. So if that interests you, subscribe to stay tuned for that. In the meanwhile, I'll leave you with this. With the multi-modality capability of this model, currently it's in the medium of our phone. But what if this phone were to grow arms and legs, hands and feet? I'm talking about a humanoid. As soon as we fuse this Omni model with a model that understands physical interaction and movement and plant it into a humanoid, we're going to have robots as capable as humans. We're gonna have a humanoid that can see, hear and speak and move and be its own physical agent to interact with the world and be a continuous infinite learner with omni reinforcement learning. And that's going to lead it to further its comprehension of the world and itself and eventually its own agency. <laughs>